Hello, and we are going to come back to the ARP 2600 a little bit, um, because I was thinking, as crazy people are wont to do, <laughs> um, that maybe I didn't explain the voltage processors quite enough. Um, so we're going to talk about this section. Um, basically, you know, since everything in analog synthesis is a number, uh, you know, it's an electrical amount, this lets you add signals together and invert them so that, you know, if you've got a plus 10, it becomes a minus 10, etc. Um, so what does that mean? <laughs> it means nothing right now, right? Um, so let's start with something really basic. I'm going to start with an arpeggio. Uh, let's just... Okay, so we've got our low arpeggio running. What if we invert it? Um, so we've got some things hardwired here, so I'm not even going to have to plug everything in. Keyboard CV is coming into the second voltage processor here, which is really number four. Um, if I take out the inverter and I go into the pitch of oscillator three, what that means is now um, higher notes on the keyboard come out as lower notes. Okay, so what happens is, because we haven't moved anything yet, it kind of negates everything. But as we start to move... Okay, for comparison... So you can hear the pitches are turned upside down. Now, we've got a hardwired minus 10 here. So as I turn that up, we can raise the pitch of the entire thing. Now to have a comparison, if we have oscillator 2. <laughs> okay. So is this musically useful? I'm not sure yet, but sure we can find a spot where it is. Yes. Yeah. So there's an interesting musical part. <laughs> okay. So then I got thinking about, all right, well, we've got our lag processor, which I feel like is sort of understandable. It's the, the easiest one to understand because it sort of takes whatever voltage is coming in and smooths it out. So if you've got like, you know, it, at, at its basic core, it's like it can add portamento to things because it slows down the pitch envelope. Um, you know, basically anything plugged in here, it slows it down. Um, but it also slows down a response time. So if you put in something that's like incredibly warbly, um, it can take out some of the warbles. Um, and you'll see here, you know, the envelope follower is hardwired to the lag processor, um, which is nice and interesting because, like, if I plug in drums into here, uh, like a voltage signal, I can actually control how responsive everything is to the drums. In practical terms, I thought I would do something like this, where I take my reverb output and I go into the envelope follower. Um, so this is sort of an incredibly warbly type of voltage that comes out. You can hear the reverb kind of running along in the background there. Okay, so what if I take out the notes and I'm just taking the voltage here I'm going to go into the filter on, uh, envelope here. So with. Okay, so a little bit of a convoluted path here. We're coming out of the VCO. Um, we're taking the reverb and going into the envelope follower, then the envelope follower to the filter frequency. Um, so, and with the resonance all the way up, you really hear how it's responding. It's, so it's kind of like eating its own tail. And you hear all that warbling. 
Now for turn up leg. Now all of a sudden we've got something that's a little more musically useful. <laughs> and we can control the pitch with the frequency here. Okay. So, as a reminder, you know, we started <laughs> way back here. Uh, let's turn this up. And then we reversed it. So something to play with, you know, and you can combine signals into here. There's lots of different things you can do, um, which I might have to make another video on if this becomes a thing. Um, so if you're interested in the voltage processor, please leave me a comment and I'll show some other ways you can combine signals in here. So I hope this gives you some ideas to play with.